pressure canning meat and meals is an amazing way to get a bunch of convenience foods on the shelf so that you can make really quick, healthy meals when you need to. But if you do it wrong, pressure canning can be deadly. Make sure you don't do these five things when you're pressure canning meats or meals. When you're pressure canning, do not wing the recipe. Make sure that you're using safety approved recipes to be sure that you're within proper pH and thickness guidelines for the food that you're canning. Finding approved recipes can be as easy as going to an approved publication like the Ball Blue Book, that's the classic, or finding safe sites online like bloggers that use the latest safety information for creating canning recipes. When you're pressure canning, do not trust a dial gauge that has not been tested within the last year by a county extension office. It's important to know exactly what pressure you're actually canning at. And unless you have this dial gauge tested, you're not gonna know if it's correct or not. And it could make your food dangerous after it's canned. If you don't have access to a county extension office, you can always use a weighted gauge or a jiggler instead. These never need to be tested. They're always right because they work on a simple physics principle. Make sure that you're always canning at the pressure that you think you're canning at by either using one of these or having one of these tested. Whenever you're pressure canning, make sure you do not overfill your pressure canner. When you are setting up your canner, you wanna make sure that you never fill it with more than two inches of water from the bottom, no matter how many jars you put in there. Under no circumstance should your jars be covered up to their necks or even worse, covering their lids when you're pressure canning. And that's true even if you have a double stack of jars, you don't want the bottom stack submerged by water. Do not ignore the headspace rules on a recipe when you're pressure canning. The headspace is the empty room between the top of your food and the top of the jar. And it is imperative to getting a good seal on your jars of food that you're pressure canning. Make sure that you're using a ruler or another gauge like this headspace ruler in order to be sure that you have the proper headspace. Most meats and meals need at least one inch of headspace or empty space at the top of the jar in order to seal properly. Do not quick cool your canner. After your processing time is entirely complete and you turn off your canner, it takes a while for the pressure to come down to room pressure before you can take your jars out of your canner. This process is crucial. It's important to the canning process. Make sure you don't do anything like tapping the jiggler, removing the weight, or worse yet, putting your entire canner into cold water. That will change the pressure too quickly and you'll either ruin your seals, you'll crack the jars, or you could even ruin your pressure canner. Okay, now that you know that, you are ready to take the next step and actually start canning pressure canning meat. Check out this video right here to learn how to pressure can meat.